I'm going to have a thought. Can okay, they hear I can you hear you. Yes, they can hear you. Okay. Maybe many, come a little bit closer. Okay, I'll, I'll, come, I'll be at this end. How many do we have Zooming right now? Uh, we got 53. Yeah, yeah. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Yay. Yay. Uh, in a little Hi. bit, we'll ask, you can ask questions, but I'm going to kind of go over things for everybody, and hopefully I'll answer most of your questions. Uh, if not, just jump right in and ask questions along with us. Uh, so if you got this, almost every one of your questions will be pretty much answered uh, in the in this thing, in this little form. Uh, it has the flights. Uh, it has common uh, Hebrew words uh, that you might ask, and it kind of tells you uh, what you have to be looking for. And that is mostly, put this down here. That is mostly in this form here that is in that uh, thing. And if you go to uh, the back, it gives all kinds of travel tips. Uh, more travel tips, what to do at the airport, on the plane. Uh, you know, you always, on an international flight, you want to be there three hours early, not two hours early. Okay. But this even has the temperature of what it's going to be like in Israel. It has, you know, if you're taking cameras, electronics, uh, things you have to do to get ready. Uh, it gives you a packing checklist. You can checklist off. But here's some of the most important things. Uh, I don't remember if it's on this list or not. If you have anything electrical, you have to get electrical adapters for Israel, for Jordan. Uh, and they're not always the same. So you got to make sure you go to Amazon or whatever and buy the adapter so you can plug uh, your electronics into. I mean, for me, it's really important. I have a CPAP machine. Uh, so I've got to make sure my CPAP machine works. Uh, but people, if, if you're also remember to bring a charger for your phone. Don't forget any chargers for your laptop, chargers for your iPhone. All right, that's really important. Uh, and we had talked about signs being at the airport when we arrived. For all of you to know, every airport you go to, there will be someone holding a sign that says, Mark Bill, El Shaddai Ministries, Israel, Jordan, Turk. So when you get to the uh, gate, be looking for someone holding the sign, and you all will get to meet together and visit and get to know each other before you get on the plane. Now, when we go to leave, uh, some people are driving from Amman, Jordan, all the way to Tel Aviv, Israel, on the bus to catch the Tel Aviv flight. Some are leaving from Amman, Jordan, to come back. They're not going to Tel Aviv. And so I'm going to be on the flight from Amman, Jordan, back to Seattle. How long is that trip? Uh, the, how long does the total trip? To Jordan, to Tel Aviv. Oh, the drive-wise? Yeah. Two hours. Okay. It's not bad. Uh, but anyway, from uh, so I'm going to be on the flight with all of you here going, but I won't be on the flight coming back for most of you. OK, I'm going to be catching a flight from Amman back. Uh, but again, when everybody gets to the airport locally, there will be someone holding signs. And then all of us are going to be landing in Israel, but some will be landing uh, in the morning. Some will be landing in the mid afternoon. Some will be landing in the late afternoon. But there will be buses for every flight at the airport, and there will be people holding signs saying, hey, El Shaddai, you know, tour, and they're expecting everybody. And so um, when you land at Tel Aviv, you're already going to have a bunch of friends uh, because you're going to get to meet them at the airport and just as a group go out to the uh, terminal and you will find Believe me, people holding signs so you won't get lost. And they're all together anyway, so it feels really good. Okay? Now, one of the main things also uh, you want to remember to do is contact your credit card company to make sure they don't block your credit card because they, it's fraud and someone else has your credit card. So it's good to call them and let them know you're traveling. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, also, is there anyone here who has any food allergies? We've had people who've had food allergies on the tour. Uh, one person was allergic to sesame seeds, and then they get to Israel, and they get some tahini and don't realize it's full of sesame seeds, and we have to get an EpiPen and take them to the hospital, uh, and it uh, kind of messes up the tour. So it's okay if you have allergies. Just let us know so we can let you know if there's anything in the food that's there. Does that make sense? I mean, a lot of people have different food allergies, corn allergies, dairy allergies, but uh, we can help you know if something like that has that. Yeah, that's I have a question. 
Yeah, so when we are arriving, want to see you? Well, I don't know. Audio. It's upside down. Everybody <laughs> no, no, every, there's three different flights. And if, and if you're, yeah, everyone's so, that, no. there'll be three That's time, three pickups it. at the airport. <laughs> there'll be a pickup for every group. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're flying on your own. Yes. Yeah. Right. And so what, yeah, so what you want to do is uh email me, email me, and I will make sure with Sherry uh how it's gonna work okay. if you're not with the group. Yeah, just email me and then I'll talk to Sherry more. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've um yeah, what's Mark? your question? Sherry's Mark? on. Hang on. Oh, why Sherry? Uh hang on, I gotta all right, she's here. Yay! Uh, we want to hear you, so make sure uh, we can hear on. you. I gotta unmute her. I don't. Uh... Am I? I'm. I'm oh, muted. We can't hear you yet. Hang on. No here. Uh, it says she's it there. Unmuted. Are you unmuted, Sherry? Yes. Yeah. Here, let's pull this out. Yes. Can you hear me now? It just the same as can you hear me? Uh, That's blank. No, um. Oh, yeah, I'm unmuted volume. here. Is that all? I thought it was no. Uh, oh no. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Hey, Sherry, this is Donna. We can hear you from Alaska. Yeah, yes. Donna. I think you guys that are on can hear me, but the people that um are there, the they also yeah. can't hear me. Go to the yeah, that's what I was letting you know. So... Yeah, thanks, honey. Good to hear your voice. Can you hear me? I can. We can hear you, yes. Yeah, she can hear you. Okay, I'm going to keep talking then while we're trying to get everyone online to be able to talk. We're trying to fix it, the volume, because we okay. can't hear anybody online. To, okay, I have a couple things to add to what he's saying, he's saying something. that are important. It? No, she's talking to that. Maybe oh. she's talking to them. I don't know. I am. I am. Um, can people online hear you, Sherry? She's yeah. saying everyone yeah. online can hear her. Yes. Why can't we yes. hear her? Okay. That's weird. <laughs> okay. Well, as long as everyone else can hear me, I'll try to answer questions here locally. Yes. I hear you. You're just going to fly out of Chicago. No, you're not. You're flying out of Seattle. Grant, thank you for yes. <sighs> I wish I could talk. If anybody has any questions of where they're flying out of, they need to email me. Okay. Current... Sounds like somebody there has a question no, about uh, their airport. You can get it at your bank right now. You can just go to your bank and say, I want to buy some Israeli currency, Jordan currency, and give them the amount, and they will exchange it for you, and you'll have it within a couple of days. If you want, some, the thing is, what's the rate? Uh, and so sometimes some people find it's better to buy the Israeli currency when you land at the airport. Sherry, I'm going to make you a co-host. Okay. okay. I don't know if that'll help. Do you have to do something? Uh, so uh, anyway, sometimes it's better uh I, I like to just get my money here i, I mean be, the reason you. why is you're slowing if we have a uh, you know 100 people all anybody. trying to get currency there it's really going to slow it down so it's better to get your money now you know however much you want but your uh card works everywhere there pretty much it's just not for small things like a bottle of water for 50 cents or stuff you, you want to use we're going to try to get this fixed here okay uh, uh i'll ask sherry that question when we can hear from her, right. okay. Okay. Uh, does anybody here locally have any questions about? Okay. What's the normally their lunch is? Okay. Yeah. Okay. The big thing is all of your breakfast and dinners are paid for. Lunch is not. Some people they're so stuffed at breakfast they don't need lunch. Other people want lunch because they're grazers. Yeah, you, but typically lunches there will be ten to fifteen dollars. Okay. So you have to think in terms of ten days, ten to fifteen dollars. That's hundred and fifty dollars for lunch. Higher. Anybody that hears me. I don't think you have to tip there. Yeah. I'd recommend twenty dollars. Yeah. Things have gone up since COVID. Uh, your question? Well, it says here Israel takes U.S. dollars. Holy yes, cow. they do. I bring U.S. dollars as well. Uh, oh, I got, yeah. yeah I'll take US, I think US dollars and credit cards. The thing is, you don't always know on the street if you're getting a good exchange. That's uh, the thing. Uh, we had uh, one case where there were some Arabs trying to exchange the money and they were ripping all of our people off because it wasn't the proper. Believe me, people are people everywhere. You will not get a good exchange rate from the people. You want to get it from. Uh, Place that exchange, foreign currency exchange. Yeah. Is there yeah. is there a chart somewhere for people like me who can't think fast 
can convert. Yes, I can help you real shekels. quickly. It's and basically a quarter. quarter. One shekel is a quarter. Yeah. Okay. I'll show you. you may be off three or four shekels, okay. but one shekel is a quarter. Okay. Think of it that way. That's a rough. All right. Yeah, that's so I'd like to know the cost of the baptism rules if there's lockers and towels. Yes, there's lockers, there's towels. I think it's like ten dollars, isn't it, Sherry, for the water baptism robe stuff? It's about ten dollars, right? And you get a certificate. It's about ten dollars. Okay. I think it went up to fifteen lately. Everything since COVID is higher. Yes. And can we reach things on the bus for us? Okay, so Sherry, I just made you the host. Okay, do what yeah, I for do. For us to be able to hear, I think I'm going to have to exit and restart. You bring your electronics oh, so theoretically, the nobody will get cut off because you're now the host. So for us to be able to hear, I'm going to have to reboot. Okay. But I made Sherry the host, so everybody should stay attached. Okay, stay attached. Hopefully, everybody, we're going to reboot this so Sherry can communicate with everybody. So we all, all right. just stay the way we are, right? What, uh, I don't know. She's talking to them. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. Hope this works, guys. <laughs> I feel like it's us and them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sherry, quick question. Do they yes. take American Express over there? Oh, I wouldn't bring yes. American Express, no. Oh, uh, that's right. Really MasterCard. He's the man. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have American Express, so I don't remember, but I don't, I don't, I, uh, that one is because it, they charge more. American Express usually charges more. Not everybody uses them. Um, I'm trying to think some of the questions they said. Um, everybody, you do not need uh, your, we're not going to be giving out confirmation numbers. We're not going to be giving out ticket numbers. Uh, and there's a reason for that. All you need to get your boarding pass is when you go to the airport, there's going to be a kiosk and there's going to be a little slot. Stick your passport in that kiosk and your boarding pass will come out right away. Now, if you bought your own ticket, obviously you're going to have your, your number and you can put that in. But if you got the group flights, all you need is your passport. Hi, Sherry. Uh -huh. I have a question. Um, you know, the leaflet that Mark was sharing at the start of the meeting. Yes. I don't think, uh, um, has everyone got a copy of that? Because I don't think I've got one. People that are international did not get them by mail, but we sent it electronically. Okay. All the information uh, that's in that, a, that booklet, like, you know, should have gotten um, electronically. And I can call okay. what I want. Uh, if you, you, you didn't see it, it if you didn't get, get it or with the spam or something, just email me and I'll have you send it to you. Okay, because thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. sure? Yeah, because the data is downloaded. Yes. Well. You have to keep it on Wi Fi the whole time yeah. and not get anything yeah. from a satellite. I have to have my son set it up. That's your option. You can't hear it. hear that says something about turn off your roaming. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Turn off your Wi Fi, turn off your roaming. Oh, you know, but it's uh, turn off your wife. I think my daughter. Well, Jill, can you hear me? You want a big charge. Hello, you, your, can you hear me? Company, Jill, can you hear me? That's why you just have to let your phone company yes, know. Sure, we can hear you. I'm sorry. Gary, yeah, ten dollars a day. Yes. Hey, and can we mute them so right. we can hear you? Right. It's confusing. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I think, I think they'll probably do that yeah. as soon yeah. as they hear me. Exactly. Yeah, I, have to I don't know what it is for AT&T, but Verizon, that's all you got to do. Well, I know it's here. I can't find can you hear me? There we go, audio. Okay, it's testing like, well, we don't see her, though. Oh, wait. It's, no, we won't actually. There it is. No. Nope. Okay, we're good. I Sherry, can you say hi? Hi, can everybody hear Yay! me? Yay! We can hear you now. Yippee! All right. <laughs> All right, everybody, this is Sherry. Sherry, say hello and kind of express what you're, anything you're thinking about. Um, oh, look at the dog. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Sherry Moore. I probably emailed all of you at some time or another. I'm going to be on the trip with you. And I'm basically here today just to answer any questions you have. Um, Mark has gone over. It sounds like a lot of stuff. Uh, bottom line is uh, we're not going to be sending out um, e-ticket numbers or any kind of numbers to you all. Um, and there's a reason for that. It's because all of you just about have the same number. And what has happened, not to me, thank God, but to another agent is they gave that number out to a passenger and that passenger went online and was messing around with, with their ticket and they accidentally canceled the entire group's tickets. The, the group got to the airport and nobody had tickets. Oh. So 
Because of that, we do not give the numbers out. Now, Mark is going to have the numbers in Seattle and and different and and Tim will have it in Chicago and Bill will have I mean, we have people that are going to have those numbers. So if they're needed, we'll have them. But you will not need them to get your boarding pass. All you need to do is walk up to the kiosk at the airport that you're flying from and put your passport in the little slot there. If you can't find it or you have trouble, the, the, there'll be an agent that's helping you and your boarding pass will be printed right out. Okay. Would would that would that be at the airlines that we're flying on, correct? Yes. Yes. You go to the gate of the airline you're flying on. These are people, I'm talking about people with group, group flights. If you have your own flight, it's totally different. You yeah. have your number. Now, what's going to happen to everybody is like Mark said, there's going to be somebody meeting you at each of the airports. But when you get to Israel and after you go through customs and you enter the baggage claim area, there's going to be somebody there with a sign that says Mark Biltz. Okay. You walk up to that person and she or he is going to say, your luggage is on carousel two. Everybody get their luggage and meet over here oh, wow. and you know, over here. So what that person Perfect. is going to do is collect everybody on the group flights. Perfect. And they're going to take you out together directly to the guide. Okay. Um, and then the guide, the guide will take you to the bus. Um, if you are land only and you are waiting for a, a bus transfer, which some of you are, you come out of the, the where you get your luggage and there's a big reception area. This is where everybody else will be meeting their guide and there are chairs there. There's restaurants. You just wait. And eventually the guide will be there with a sign that says Mark Biltz. Now, the guide is not going to be there. If your flight arrives two hours or two and a half hours early, the guide is not going to be there holding a sign, you know, two and a half hours early. He's going to be holding the sign when it gets closer to the group to come out. Typically, it takes a group at least an hour from the time they land to the time they get through. And often lately, an hour and a half and sometimes even two hours. Oh, okay. Oh. So it just depends. It depends. Um, so that's what will happen with uh, the arrival. Hey, Sherry, okay? one yes. quick question. Could those people that are flying on their own can they have the time when the group arrives so they know how long their wait will be when they land? Everybody, everybody has, everybody's been given all the flight itinerary for all That's the groups. Right. It's in here. Yeah. It's in here. That's right. Yeah. So everybody has it all. Um, now, if you don't want to wait, um, Israel is really great with uh, taxi service. And even in the, in the baggage claim area, there's big yellow signs that say, follow the yellow path uh, to the authorized taxi only use an authorized taxi um, when you're leaving. And they don't say that because it's unsafe. They just say that because if you get a person that's not an authorized taxi driver, chances are you're going to be charged more. So as soon as you get out of the, the luggage area and you walk out, there are even footprints on the floor, yellow footprints and signs that say, you know, taxi. So taxis are easy to find. All the signs in Ben Gurion are in English. Every sign from the Second, you get off the plane. They're in Hebrew, Arabic, and English. So you got your, you're covered with all three of those. Um, easy to find. So if you want to go, you just go ahead and take a, a taxi to the airport. Um, and I and I would kind of recommend that if you're if you're going to be waiting a long time, because you can go to the airport. You can you know rest. You can get your hotel room. You can you know walk on the beach. You can have dinner. You know. Um, so I would recommend that. So that's arrivals. Any questions about arrivals? I have some questions. Yes. Can you hear me? I'm coming yes. in at nine nine forty. We talked before. I'm coming in from Istanbul, and so you said you don't know, have any idea what the taxi cost would be from Ben Gurion to the Galilee. You know, I don't. Um, we I could Google it. I could Google it. Um, it's going to be. It, it's going to be a little bit expensive. I will say that only because it's a distance. It's going to take about an hour and a half, probably. Okay, let, let's say I elect to do that. If I get to the hotel, are they going to have a room in my name? Yes. If you get there, if you arrive at the hotel before the group, all you do is walk up to the front desk like you would here in America, give them your name and tell them you're with the Mark Biltz group. Okay. 
and they'll give you your key. If the room's ready, they'll give you your room right well, away. Well, I'm close. We talked about it. I'm closer to being with the Chicago group, and they know that I might might join them, correct? Yeah, anybody that has not sent me your, if you're land only, if you haven't sent me your flight information, please send it to me because I like to know every single one of you when you're going to be where so that we don't lose you. I, I think I did that. My, I'm Robert yeah, Spickle. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. And, and anything specific, you know, just to your situation, why don't you just, you know, go ahead and email me <laughs> later. Okay. I didn't do anything yet. Hello? Yes. Hey, Sherry. Yes. Do you know what the exchange rate at the airport is so that we can have an idea at our, our banks if we should go ahead and get it here at the bank or at the airport? Okay. Typically, the banks are cheaper than the airport. Okay. You just have but to I wait. I highly recommend, I highly recommend get your money exchange before you get to Israel because there are 170 some of us. And if all of us are, you know, one to exchange money, it's going to take forever. So you really need to do that ahead of time. Another thing you must bring, it's in the booklet, but I want to emphasize this, bring dollars because um, the driver will have water on the bus and it will cost a dollar a bottle. And I'm also a registered nurse. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but I am. I'm also a registered nurse. And let me tell you, this time of year, especially people get dehydrated very, very quickly. 100 degrees right now. Yeah. And you, you're going to get dehydrated even well. before you know it. So you need to need to drink, 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 even, you know, even if you don't have a dollar, get a, get water. Um, and usually the first sign is dehydration is a headache. So if you start feeling like you have a headache on this trip, drink a whole bottle of water. Seriously. Um, so bring a dollars for water. Dollars um, many for places take dollars, but some places don't, you know, and many places take credit cards. We'll let you know if it's a place not to use your credit card. I would never use a credit card in the marketplace, in the, sh in the shoe. Don't use a credit card there. Definitely use cash, but we'll alert you. The guides and I will, and Mark will alert you. Don't use your credit card here. They just have to be aware that they need to waste, wait seven to 10 days to get the shekels and the jordanian money if they go to their bank they don't have yeah, a... it depends upon the bank yeah yeah, yeah. So so what it, they... does, it does depend on the bank i received mines already i did mine monday and i got them tuesday it depends on your bank and the amount that i received was i, I ordered with the 300 for the shekels and i got but for 300 dollars of american i got 1050 dollars of shekels for the dinar i did a hundred dollars and it was $65, yes. uh, 65 dinar. So their money is kind of, you know, worth a lot more than ours. Yeah. Uh, yeah and it, no. Like I said, it only took like a day and a half to get mine. You can get it at a local bank? Yeah. Yes. Yep. You have to call, call your bank and see if they do, uh, if they do it. But most, most of them are. Everyone's talking mm -hmm. like that. Um, so we get both um, shekels and dinar. I'd be able to mute some. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would get both. See how she got her. You don't need as many dinar because we're not going to be in Jordan as long. So, 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 so recommending um three hundred um for shekels and a hundred dollars for dinar for yeah. all. Of Sure, and it would be like ninety nine dollars and sixty five cent is what it was worth for the dinar of what I paid. For sixty-five dollars of theirs. Okay. Uh, Mark, and what, what would you like me to cover now? Uh, I guess we can mostly just answer any other questions. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have questions? Yes, Sherry. Sherry, can yes. you hear me? Yes. Yeah. This is Jason, and I'm I'm just curious about this. Uh, my wife and I will be flying out from Detroit to Chicago to catch the flight. So when we get to Detroit Airport, we just just use our passport to at the kiosk and just get our, our pass or what what do we to do? Yeah. Okay. If you if you booked your own flight. No, we you book it for us. I mean we we, we have a connecting flight from Detroit uh to Chicago. And uh you know Okay. So, so I'm gonna yeah. I'm address I'm gonna address this kind of broadly so that it can everybody if you have a connecting flight from your hometown to either Newark or Chicago. Yeah. Um, or even Seattle, but the, most of them are from Newark or Chicago. 
there's a very strong possibility that you will have to recheck your bags, especially if you booked your own flight from your hometown, say to Chicago. You will definitely have to collect your bags, come out and go back in through customs again, and then do it all over again. Yes, you will. So be prepared. You also may have to pay a fee, a luggage fee at your hometown. Now, when you get to Chicago or Newark or Seattle, you will not have an extra fee at all for that. Um, the, the baggage is taken care of. You get one carry-on, one purse, and one large suitcase. But keeping in mind, you're going to be lugging this all over two countries. So I really strongly recommend condense it as much as possible. So just basically a carry-on would be suggested, a carry-on and... And or, then or a purse or a backpack and a, a piece of luggage. A, one piece of luggage and a backpack or, or that's pr basically what I got. I didn't I didn't that's great. large luggage. Uh keep in mind no no liquids in the carry on. Uh, above three and a half ounces. Oh. I know. Real quick here. Uh, uh we did not get any electronic uh E ticket for the Detroit to Chicago, and we just—I mean, basically, I just want to make sure that we just go to uh to the kiosk and just scan our passport, and then we will get the pass. Is that right, or or how that? Well, in Detroit, you can probably use your your um, well, in if in Detroit, you can probably even use your driver's license. But okay. but yes, you can put your passport in. Um, yes, passport will work every time. Okay, That's so easy. really. And, and I just kind of scan my passport at the kiosk and then out come the uh, pass. And then I just check in and then potentially I will need to uh, 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 basically claim my luggage and then redo it again. Yes, when you get to either Newark or Chicago, you will have to recheck your bags and go through customs all over again. Customs all over again. And security. And security again. Another thing to keep in mind. Um, we're echoing. Um, is all Israeli flights go through a second security check and usually about an hour or so before the flight departs, they start boarding and you have to go through a second security ahead of time. That's so, really, you know, that's keep cool. that in mind if you get to an airport and you, and you have a little bit, a few hours to kill, but keep in mind, like at least an hour and a half before you need to be getting to your gate and you need to be, you know, starting to check in. Oh, I'm going to be there like eight hours before that flight. So I think I have plenty of time. I have a question on the restrictions on the carry on. Mm -hmm. Do you, can you take like the lotions and yes. shaving yes. stuff? Just no yeah, liquid? Less than three and a half ounces. Okay. For all of that lotion, shampoo. Oh my gosh. Okay. Snacks, okay. Yes, you can bring any snacks you want. And I highly recommend doing that because if you get hungry at any time, even on the trip, mm -hmm. especially if you have allergies or food, food, you know, you're only gluten free or whatever, it's good to bring hmm. bring snacks. Sherry, you did? Sherry I, have, I have a I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just wondering. Let's see, I've got to look. Okay. Can I ask it uh, how much walking are we going to be doing each day? Can you, anybody announce her? Like all day, five hours of walking or what? Um, It's going to depend upon where we are, but there is a lot of walking. A lot. Trips. I mean, 10,000 steps a day is not uncommon. Right. Okay. Thank you. Walk every day for an hour. Pretend that's normal to prepare your feet and knees. You're you might be standing in line for an hour or two. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say Israel, um, this is like a record breaking year for a number of tourists. So we will probably have a lot of other tourists there. I also want to keep in uh, alert you all that we're going to be going to some um, whole, uh, sites that do because it's going to be hot. Some sites that uh, you must have your shoulders and your knees covered. And that's men and women. No tank tops, no shorts. We'll let you know a day ahead of time where those sites are. Uh, Capernaum is one of them. Um, 
Mount of Beatitudes. I mean, there are different sites that we have to make sure that we're covered. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to, you know, wear, I mean, the, the other possibility is not even bring a tank top or, you know, you might want to bring shorts though, but um, capris are fine or a short sleeve shirt, just your shoulders and knees have to be covered. I got a question on the Petra. You know what the, the time that we will be at Petra? I don't know exactly what time. I heard if you're not I heard if you're not there really early, you're gonna be like a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Well, there's gonna be a lot of people, I think, everywhere we go. Yeah. Petra's great though. You guys are gonna love Petra. Cool. A question too. Yes. Um, we have a kid with us. I just want to make sure what time is the breakfast going to be, because I think we're going to go always, you know, set six o'clock in the morning. Is it going to be like earlier or later? Each day, uh, the guide will let us, the guides will let us know what um, time is breakfast on the bus and what time we're departing. I mean, wake up call breakfast and the time we're departing, excuse me. Um, typically, it's wake up at six breakfast at seven and on the bus by eight. But there are, especially on this itinerary that we have this year, there are a couple of days we might be leaving earlier. Now, the the breakfast, if the if the cafeteria is open or the dining area is open, you can go whenever you want. You know, you. they usually have an area, not for breakfast, not always for breakfast, but always for dinner, there's a certain area they're going to put our group in. Okay, and they're going to tell us breakfast is at 6.30 <laughs> or 7 p.m. We need to adhere to that. Um, but breakfast is a little more open. There's also going to be a day that um, when we go from one hotel to the next, we're going to um, have everybody put their luggage outside their door. So it'll be something like this. Wake up call at six, breakfast at seven, and put your luggage outside the door and be on the bus by like quarter of eight. That's very typical. So what you're going to make sure you do that you, is you have all your luggage packed. It's going to go under the bus and put it outside your door and then go down to breakfast. It's gonna to be totally safe there. We've never in all the 12, 13 years I've done this, nobody's ever you know, had their luggage stolen. Um, and what you're gonna do before you get on the bus is you actually have to stand there and say to the, to the, um, the bellhop, this is my piece of luggage and you have to watch him put it under the bus. You cannot get on the bus until you see your luggage go on. And that's so that nobody's luggage gets lost. Okay. So we'll be doing that every time we change hotels. Mm -hmm. I have also got ribbons. You all have been assigned buses already. And some are going to be on the red, blue, yellow. I forget the other purple, purple bus. Those are the four colors. And I'm going to be giving you all out the first day ribbons that are that color. So if you're on the yellow bus, you're going to get a yellow ribbon and on your, um, luggage you're going to put a yellow ribbon okay I want you're, going to keep that, you're going to keep that yellow ribbon on your luggage the whole for the whole trip and that makes it easier for the bellhops to know okay all this is all yellow luggage just all goes over here blue goes over here great idea luggage. sure okay Gary, um i have a question um in that packet um it said yosher tours this little uh, blue it what what does this get hooked to our luggage or what gets hooked to your um your checked luggage okay the blue yeah, um blue. And, does. Okay. and again we, we made those bright blue because they're easier to see our luggage because then there's going to be a lot of people in the hotel it's not just our group there are going to be other groups in the hotel and it's good to have those bright blue uh, luggage tags plus our ribbons okay. so our our luggage won't get lost with anybody else's uh, one more thing about the water. Um, you said um, um, uh, we have this container that um, message um, kind of like uh, filters oh, the water. Can't hear you. Oh, I can't. They can't. No. Oh. Can can we use that while we're? Yeah. On you can use a water filter if you bring one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you bring one, it's fine. I have to I say that I drink I drink the tap water in Israel all the time. Uh -huh. My son, my son lives outside of Jerusalem, and I use I drink his water all the time. Okay, so there's no problem with the water then. No. <laughs> okay. I have friends. Yes, that's uh, yeah. You may have to pay for it. I have friends in Jerusalem. I heard that we're going to have a couple three hours free, 
Do you have an educated guess what day that will be? Um, you know, we have some, Mark has lined up some great um, guest speakers also for the evenings. Because mm -hmm. um, normally I would say I'll have them, you know, meet them after dinner. Um, typically what's going to happen is we're going to get back to the hotel around, I mean, every day is going to be different, but around 5.30, usually dinners at 6.30 or 7. Um, and then Mark is going to have guest speakers a lot of the nights after dinner. Um, I was just so, going to say that they're not obligated to attend right. that. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, it's what good. I would do, if you have, if you have friends in Jerusalem, what I would do okay. is, um, be, be talking to them that day. We can, exactly. that day we'll know the guide okay. will know. Okay. We're definitely going to be back by five 30 and you can tell your friend to come. You bet. Thank you. I, I have a question. I have a connecting flight from uh, San Francisco to Seattle. I arrive at 1220. The flight departs at three at United. Will I be going through a customs in Seattle before I board the go to the United uh, airport terminal? I'll be in one terminal and I'll be going to another terminal. Well, I'm bringing, I'm bringing carry-on luggage only. The people from Seattle are going to San Francisco. Why would you go from San Francisco to Seattle to go back to San Francisco? I was told uh, by your office that I had to do that to be right. with. Right, some you do, you do. No, yeah. well, I tell I, you, what, no. email me, email me per separately, and I can. I'll get you straight. Okay, I'll, right. I'll let you know exactly what to do. Okay. But typically, if you're going from a small, you know, like a, a local airport to another one. Unless we've ticketed you all together, if if I've done the ticket and it's all together, chances are you may not have to. But again, some again the airlines drive me crazy. Yeah. Um, sometimes it depends upon the agent as to whether or not they'll they'll put it all the way through. Seriously, that's why I can never say yes. You definitely we're going to have your luggage checked all the way through. Um, but Don't but anybody <laughs> on our flights, like from Seattle or Newark or Chicago, those flights will all be checked through. Are we we'll not have to recheck them. Oh, are we what? Are, Sherry. Um, we are Sherry, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. This is Gail Thomas. I'm flying into Newark, and I'd like to know who I am meeting with. Uh, who's Who am I to? There'll who's going to be with the greeter? Sign. There'll be somebody there with a sign. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So when we... We we land at the gate. At the gate, the person will be at the gate. Not you know, not where you check in. After you get to your gate, there'll be somebody there. And uh, everybody, please go up to that person because that person's going to have a list of everybody's names, and they are going to want to check it off. You know, to make sure they have everybody. So do, when you get to the gate and you see the person with the sign, um, go up to him and say, you know, I'm Gail Nichols or whatever. Okay, so when we arrive. Um, from we're coming from Texas and we arrive at Newark at Newark we just go and look for the person right away right well what you're going to do you probably you may have to re get your bags and then come back in again and oh, you're going to yeah. go to the we counter. Have, so I don't think we're going to have to check anything you may and you may not it's you know it's hard to say it depends again again on the on what the airlines what you need to do everybody when you check into your very first place from your hometown you need to say to them ask them are my bags going to be checked through or do i need to recheck them when i get to either newark or chicago or whatever ask that question when you get to, from your hometown airport that mm -hmm. would be the best thing and then you'll know what you have to do Okay. And I really can't say whether or not you will or won't be doing that because, again, I, the airlines, there's no rhyme or reason to when they decide one thing or another about this. So, um, okay. So we have. Um, you meet somebody there. Yeah. Well, Mark was saying that there was somebody that he knew was going to have a sign. Mm -hmm. and That'll we, be at the gate. That's, at the gate. That's, oh, so that's good for. That's once we're in there, then. Yeah. Past customs. You'll have to find your way to the gate. Okay. 
Uh, quick question: Is is my brother Tim on right now, or Bill Garfield, so everyone can see your face? That's a good idea. Uh, Tim, if you're on, or Bill, if you're on. If not, well, I guess that's okay. Right. Um, I had a question for Mark, actually. Yeah. Um, is it possible, Mark, that you bring some of your material from El Shaddai Ministries? Because I'm, I'm based in the UK, so it's not easy for me to access what some of your like? book. I quite like that calendar, the Anna Mundi calendar, the whole. Okay. And and the USB uh, teachings, if you can bring them, I'll certainly buy, buy them off you. I, no, I just may give them to you. We'll see what happens, but I'll bring some just for you. That's Thank good. You. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't have the new one. Um, also, I, one thing I want to say, too, um, a lot of you that um, are land only that are going to be going back to uh, Tel Aviv, we sent an email out this week. It's going to be an additional $100 to cover that. Um, if you really looked at things, you saw that Seattle's trip was more expensive than Newark and Chicago. And that's the reason because of going back in, because we have customs and everything else you have to go through. So if you are somebody that you got to eat, um, that is taking, that is land only, that is taking the bus from Amman to Tel Aviv, make sure you send in your hundred dollars per person. Oh, are we? And everybody, you know, we should be getting soon, um, all final payments in too. Okay. Hey. Um, uh, it, uh, just to make sure, um, we're going from Texas to New York and then from New York to um, Tel, Aviv. Tel Aviv. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and so we have to pay another hundred. Is that it's what a, you just? It depends. No, if you're if you're on the Newark or Chicago flights, you do not. Oh, okay. You have to pay anything extra. Okay. Just it's just the people that didn't get flights with us that were supplying transportation back to Israel for them. Okay. Sharon has a question. The mm -hmm. one thing I would say is the first time I went, I barely had 25 pounds in my suitcase. And when I came home with my books and my rocks, I was just at 50 pounds. Hey, make room for the gifts and yeah, so yeah, it's a good point. If you stuff. plan on buying things, save room. <laughs> yeah, but those suitcases are very tiny. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so for fourteen days, don't bring very much clothing. Then <laughs> wear your pants more than once. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the the other the other thing though is that you can wash clothes that you have worn. If you leave them out at night, they'll be dry in the morning. It's pretty. It, it's just kind of the way it is. So, and and you got a sink, so just do that. It's um, hey, don't you that look hard. cute? <laughs> that that's actually a good point. A really good point. Uh, there are no like uh, America. We have you know washers and dryers sometimes in hotels. You will mm. not have that anywhere in Israel. No, nowhere. You can send your clothes out to be laundered, but um, it's very, in my opinion, very expensive, and you might get it back. You probably will get it back. But so what, what they just suggested is really good. If you need to wash something out, just do it in your sink, hang it in either your bathroom or on your patio or whatever. I have a yeah. question on, do they have Uber over there too? In no, Tel they do not. Okay, just the taxis. Yeah, they have something, but it's not like, and, and me who goes all the time. And again, like I said, I have a son that lives there. Um, I don't even use it. It's called get, but I, I don't, it's, it's, it's much different. And you have to set up this major account. And I mean, it's, it's, you know, not like our Uber or Lyft. Okay, so the taxi the, would be the best. I have one question on the bus assignments. Um, and I'm coming in and I'm not sure if I'm coming on the Chicago group to get to Galilee from Tel Aviv. But when are, when does that, uh, assignments going to take place for somebody in my situation? We've already assigned all the buses. Um, yeah. If you have somebody you really, really want to be with and you haven't told us already, um, let me know. Okay. So we'll take, care, take care of that. At but, but don't, you know, just email me. Yeah, email me. Don't tell me now. Don't tell me now. Yeah. Just email me and um, 
we've you know we've put roommates together and if you've already made a request to be with somebody we've we've yeah. honored that but um so if you have anybody um just email me we'll, we'll try to get everybody right. with who they want to be with i am going to put whatsapp on my what's up on my WhatsApp. WhatsApp, whatsapp on my phone so people can contact me if there's an emergency have everybody heard of whatsapp yeah. WhatsApp is an app you can download that it doesn't cost anything to talk to people around the world. Yeah, yeah. WhatsApp is a great idea, and and I don't know, Jill and Mark, we might want to um, set up a, a WhatsApp group thing. Yeah. Um, so maybe you can do that. You know, for everybody in the group. That'd be great. Um, or fa I mean, Facebook. I don't know if everybody has Facebook either. Lots of our groups do Facebook or WhatsApp, and it's for the group. And that way, if there's anything the whole group needs to know, then we for that day or the next day, we put it in and everybody sees it. WhatsApp's the best. Yeah. But I don't know if they can hear you. Oh. WhatsApp is great, just like Mark said, because you can text and you can call people in the United States and it doesn't cost a cent. So which one is that? Is and everybody in Israel uses it. It says me. <laughs> Uh, what was that again? And what does everybody use again? It's called what's like W H A T apostrophe S and then A P P what's app. Okay. Free, free to download. I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. Uh, I'd like to know uh, who do I give a list of my allergies to? Um, You don't, well, you can send it to me, although what I'll probably tell most people, this is what I really recommend. If you have an allergy, you don't really have to send it to me so much. But if you have something that you have anaphylactic shock to, definitely, like Mark said, bring an EpiPen. If you have an allergy to something, the best thing to do is each time we get ready, to, you get ready to eat at a meal, ask to see the chef or a wait staff there and say, I have an allergy to such and such. It, what should I avoid? Because all the meals are uh, buffet, all you can eat buffet. The breakfasts and dinners are these beautiful buffets with tons of food. You're gonna gain five pounds, believe me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and the food's great. Um, so just say, I'm allergic to this, what should I avoid? Is what I would suggest. Yeah. Okay, so I just need to save that until we get there and when the food is there. Okay. Yep. That's what I would do. That's not gonna matter on the plane. Well, you can say something on the plane if you like. I mean, I mean you know, they most of the time with on the plane, the things they want to know, if, you know, you want vegetarian, you want kosher, you want, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, I, and, I have a, and it's almost too late to be, to tell me that now, almost, um, because we've already done final ticketing. But if you, if you haven't already told me and have a request, do send it to me and I'll try. Okay. Hey, I have one more question. Um, the insurance. Mm. Do you yeah. highly recommend that we get it mm -hmm. and. How much is it? I highly recommend it only because over the years doing this job, um, you never know when something's going to happen. I've had, uh, I had one person that tripped at Masada and we had to have sutures in our head right here. Um, I, you know, from little things to really big things. I had one person, the minute they landed, they had a pulmonary embolism and we had to take them right up to the ER. Ben Gurion has a great ER, by the way. <laughs> I was like a major hospital ER. I was impressed. Um, so you just never know what's going to happen. Um, or your luggage could get lost and not have it for five days. But if you have insurance, we can put you on a taxi. You can go to the mall and you can buy clothes and toiletries. And it's all covered. You just don't ever know. So I highly recommend it. I know it, it can be expensive. It's based on your age, your city, and how much you want to cover. But... I mean, it's, it's a personal thing. It's up to you, you know, if you want it, if you want it's like any insurance, um, it's a, it's a personal thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Is it very, <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't know. Is it how, what? How much um, that insurance would be? Um, do you have a kind of an estimate? Um, well, there's a link it, um, that when we first sent you the email saying, you know, th thank you for registering. Uh, insurance is strongly recommended and we gave you the link mm -hmm. um you click on that and if you don't have it any longer which you might not email me and say please send me the link for insurance when you click on that it'll give you a free quote okay 
the I have a question. The more expensive it is, obviously. Excuse me. I have, I have a the question. The older you are, the more expensive the insurance is. Really. I have a question. Should we? What should we bring in our day bags? Do you have any suggestions? Um, first of all, speaking of day bags, when you arrive on Israel after the first day, everybody's going to get some gifts. You're going to get um, from me. Uh, first, I'll back up a little bit. I partner, or I actually hire, on your all's behalf, an agent in Israel. They are called Sarl. So you're going to get a, a baseball hat that says Sarl on it. You're going to get a, a little backpack that has Yosher Tours and Sarl on it. And you're going to get a map of Israel. All those things are free. And they're going to get another gift from me at the end. But I won't tell you what that is because I will let it be as a little surprise. Um, um, but um, so you're already going to have a little backpack. What I, I think the less you bring, the better. Now, I've changed my ways and I, Mark may have a different theory about this. And if he does, he can correct me. But I usually tell people, carry your passport with you at all times. And the reason I say that is because I, my husband and I, were in the Brussels terrorist attack seven years ago. And having gone through that experience, I now never go anywhere without my passport. And before that, I didn't used to recommend that to people, but I highly recommend it now. Because if my husband and I, because what happened with the terrorist attack, we were in the gate and they made all of us leave out onto the tarmac and we couldn't bring one thing with us. But Thank God my husband had put our two passports in his shirt pocket. And because we had our passports, we were able to finally eventually get to Israel, you know, two days later rather than a week later when we had to have gone to the embassy and I mean the whole mess. Um, so because of that, now I really highly recommend that you bring them. Now, I will say this, the bus is the safest place to have valuables because you're gonna have the driver on there and he's gonna be with the bus at all times. So I typically on a, on a given day, bring my phone, my passport, my wallet, um, you know, whatever snacks, whatever you might want. I would bring as little as you possibly need each day. And you can leave whatever you want on the bus. I mean, me, because of what I do, I bring my computer, but I leave that on the bus. I, if I were any of you, I wouldn't bring my computer unless you had to. But um, Bring as little as you have to, but the bus is a safe place. And if, you know, one place that is not very safe and you really have to watch is the Mount of Olives, believe it or not. And they have trained pickpockets there. And I'm sure the guides will tell you this when you're there. But Mount of Olives is the one and only place. Well, it's the place I would definitely be watching your belongings. And if you have your passport with you, I mean, even if you carry it with you, put it someplace very, very, very safe. Um, because you don't want to lose it. So that, that would be the only place that, you know, maybe you might want to leave your passport on the bus, possibly at the Mount of Olives. Um, but I bring it with me everywhere because being in a terrorist attack. Yeah. Put it in the suitcase. Will we get to go to the Temple Mount or do you know yet? Everything, a lot of the sites we're going, that's another thing we'll bring up because Mark and I have been on the phone this week actually talking about the itinerary. There's a, you know, you never know in Israel. I mean, right now, I mean, we have a group there right now and we've had lots of groups this year and nobody's had any problems ever, never, ever, ever in the history of me doing this. We've never had problems. But Sarel, the, the company I partner with, they watch politically and what's happening, you know, and if there's ever any little slight possibility there might be, you know, a little unrest, they're going to keep us away from there. So because of that, there might have to be some changes in the itinerary. We don't know. But we're monitoring, you know, we're constantly monitoring what's going on to keep everybody safe. Question. Um, yes. What about expensive jewelry? Yes, I, I, that's an, I'm glad you brought that up. I never take anything, any expensive jewelry. Of course. Yeah. The other thing is, Israel is very, very, very casual. It will be very casual. You will not need anything dressy. I mean, they're they're even when they have weddings, they don't, you know, it, it's it's a very casual country. So don't bring 
dressy clothes. Don't bring expensive jewelry. Um, just be simple. Good walking shoes. Bring good, really good walking shoes. You don't want to advertise us from America. Yes. What's Mark, Mark saying something? I was just saying you don't also want to advertise that you're an American or you don't want to advertise, you know, Christianity or any of that stuff. I did bring a three ring binder, the thinnest one possible, full of paper. And I took copious notes while I was on the bus. That three ring binder was on my lap. I was writing down the prayers of ascent in that map in that. And brochures I collected went in that three ring binder. Good. All right, great. Well, hey, I think that's probably it. Uh, we could probably wrap it up. Can you think of anything else we need to hit? Uh, no, if anybody has any other questions, they can just email me. All right. Well, we'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Home show Bye. Hello. Yay. Bye. I can help. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I, I've got one other quick announcement for people that are here. Uh, on the first Arab Shabbat, Friday night in Israel, uh, it's going to be October 20th. I'm going to have Chaim uh, Eisen, the guy that spoke here before, is going to do Arab Shabbat with us at the oh, hotel. Oh, okay. okay. He's going to lead it and all that. Now, uh, Lori Hines, a lady from Texas who knows Bill and Rocio real well, has a friend that lives in Jerusalem that also does Arab Shabbat meals. Uh, and a few people are going there and they have room for four more people, but it costs $70. So if there's four people here that doesn't want to be with the group Arab Shabbat, but wants to do with a little family Arab Shabbat, you have to let Rocio know or uh, me know. So there's room for four people at a small Arab Shabbat meal with a side group uh, for $70. Mark, I didn't get a back blood test in my... In yours? Okay. I just got uh, a tour on what... Are you going to be here next Shabbat? Are you going to be here next week? Um, I didn't know about it, but I can be. Well, I was going to say, I'll give you mine, because I have a whole bunch of name tags. <laughs> yeah. Now, one thing I would recommend, uh, too... There's a million black suitcases, okay? Put a, a colored tag on your suitcase or get orange duct tape so you're not waiting forever to find your suitcase. You can spot it right away. Make your suitcase very uh, visible so you're not fighting trying to find your suitcase in a sea of suitcases. Uh, yeah. Does everybody agree that iPhones or whatever you have can be directly plugged in and nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. I go there every year for 20 years. You just plug it in the socket, but make sure you have the right socket for Israel and Jordan. And to the wall. Yeah. Plug it in. Okay, so I do have to do that with my cell phone. You have to plug it into a socket or plug it into an adapter that plugs into the socket. Yeah. Um, Mark, those, yeah. ad those adapters, I'm sorry, Um, where can I get some? Uh, Best Buy or online. They have them all over online. You just order them. You can get them in a few days if you have Prime. But yeah, just put down uh, Am uh, on Amazon that you just need electrical adapters for Israel and Jordan. Okay. Thank they don't you. cost much. 20 bucks and you get a bunch of them. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Yeah. Someone mentioned earlier my water purification. Is yeah, if they have it, you can bring You don't need it. You don't need it at all. The water is great. There is one type of water that is uh, very salty or sodium or something, you know, but just make sure you get the right water. Yeah. Okay. Uh, be modest. The question was on proper swimming attire in the Dead Sea. Just be modest. Just call them, right? Yeah. yeah, just yeah. One piece is, you know, whatever. Yeah. We know that Yeah, no, no. You only have to cover your legs at two places or three, maybe, and it's only for an hour at that time. So it's not like uh, I looked at the weather and it's supposed to be in the high 80s, 80s, 90s, the whole time we're there. So thanks.
you know. Okay. Do, do we have to have swim shoes too? That's up to you. If you want to go in the Dead Sea, I recommend it highly. Yeah, yeah okay. I would. Okay. What about for the baptism? What do we wear? Uh, they'll give you a white gown, and uh, you can wear your swimsuit under the white gown, uh, and it's easy to walk out to, and they're going to videotape uh, everybody, and you can get a little videotape when you're done, uh, but you may have little tiny minnows biting on your toes, but that's fine. Right. That. <laughs> okay, so it's very important. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I really recommend the uh, your little rubber shoes or things that you can wear for your feet. Just to tell all the women, I went to the Colorado River a month or so ago, and I ordered swim shorts online through um, Amazon and a shirt, and it worked marvelously. They're really nice swim shorts, just like shorts. Yeah. yeah. Are we going through the tunnel that has the water? Yeah, uh, dry. Uh, are we going? People are asking if Thor is the Hezekiah tunnel. We're we going through the wet one or the dry one or none of them. <laughs> it's up to you. Up to you, Mark. If you want him to go through the wet one. Uh, uh, well, how many want? Well, uh, explain the difference between the two and how long they are. I know some um, of you have to get, you know, bend over to get through some of it. Yeah, the, the wet one. Okay, there's a dry one. This is a city of David. Um, and the dry one is um, is just kind of a skinny little 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 tunnel. You don't get wet. Um, the the wet one is you have to kind of bend down to get there, and it's very 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 dark in there. Um, but I I, I haven't been. Believe it or not, all, all these years I have never been the wet one. Um, oh, wow. But I, I know I can't believe I haven't been. Um, but everybody that's gone, I mean, loves it. But you're going to get wet probably up to your, well, depending on how tall you are, at least probably up to your thighs, mid-thighs. But the, the thing is, you probably should have swim shoes on for that. And you should have a flashlight yeah. because it is dark. What? And it's a little bit longer. Usually those that don't go in the, yeah. the wet one have to wait for the, the people that are in the wet one. But it's not very long. But the dry one is fine, isn't it? Oh, yeah. The dry I love one. the dry one. So, yeah, I do too. Oh, the dry one. I say dry. Yeah. Hey, dry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't drop your phone in the water. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I've, you may want to bring a little flashlight instead of you using your phone. Can, can, can we separate? And some go through the dry and some go through the wet. They want to know if they can pick if it's wet or dry at the same time, or can everyone go? Do they have to do the same? Uh, no, people can pick whichever one. They don't have to do the same. Yeah, not everybody has to do the same. Okay. You, you all come out about the same place anyway when you're finished. Oh, oh yeah. I, I remember. Okay. This yeah. Is what is the wet or dry? What are they talking about? Of course. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, proper, proper. All right. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. We'll Bye. see you in a couple weeks. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.